High above the valley floor, a ribbon of asphalt clings to a wall of stone. On one side, a solid mountain. On the other, nothing. No gradual slope, no second chances, just air, hundreds of meters of it. You drive this road with one hand on the wheel and a coffee in the cup holder, never stopping to ask the obvious question. How did anyone build this without falling off the planet? Because roads like this don't exist by accident. They exist because American engineers decided that gravity was a problem worth negotiating with. And here's the strange part. The most dangerous moment on these roads isn't when you drive them. It's when engineers first stand at the base of a cliff and say, yes, right there, that's where the highway goes. Before we go deeper, hit like and subscribe so you don't miss more stories about the hidden engineering behind everyday things. These roads look calm now, but their creation was anything but. In the United States, Mountain roads aren't scenic luxuries. They're economic arteries. They connect mining towns, logging routes, ski regions, military corridors, and entire communities that would otherwise be isolated by rock and snow. In places like the Rocky Mountains, the Sierra Nevada, and parts of Appalachia, going around a mountain can add hundreds of kilometers and hours of travel. Sometimes there is no around, there's only through or along the edge. But mountains don't care about deadlines, budgets, or human convenience. They're layered, fractured, stressed, frozen, soaked, and constantly moving in ways too slow for us to notice. And the first job of an engineer isn't to build anything, it's to understand what kind of mountain they're dealing with. At first glance, a cliff looks solid, massive, permanent. But geologists know better. Rock isn't a single block. It's a stack of stories written over millions of years. Layers formed by pressure, heat, water, and tectonic violence. Some layers are strong, others are weak. Some look stable, but are cracked internally like a dropped phone screen you haven't noticed yet. So before a single drill touches stone, engineers treat the mountain like a crime scene. They map rock types, fault lines, fracture patterns, and stress directions. They study how water moves through the cliff during rain and snowmelt. They analyze freeze-thaw cycles that slowly pry cracks wider every winter. A mountain isn't static, it breathes. And if you ignore that, it will eventually exhale your road into the valley below. Here's the twist. The safest looking cliff face is often the worst choice. Smooth rock can hide internal fractures Jagged, ugly rock sometimes tells the truth about where it's already broken and settled. Engineers aren't choosing the prettiest route. They're choosing the least dishonest one. Once they understand the mountain, the next challenge is alignment. Where exactly can a road exist when there's barely room for a hiking trail? Engineers balance slope angle, rock quality, drainage paths, construction access, and long-term stability. Sometimes the road zigzags not for scenery, but because straight lines would cut through unstable zones that want to slide. This is where most people get it wrong. Engineers don't design these roads assuming nothing will go wrong. 
They design them assuming things will absolutely go wrong, just not all at once. Rock falls are expected. Small slides are planned for. Entire sections are designed as acceptable failure zones where debris can fall without destroying the road or killing anyone. It's not about perfection. It's about controlled imperfection. And then comes the loud part, blasting. Blasting sounds brutal. Explosions ripping into mountains feels like the opposite of precision. But controlled blasting is one of the gentlest tools engineers have when done correctly. Instead of smashing rock, the goal is to persuade it to crack where you want. Engineers drill hundreds or thousands of holes in precise patterns, sometimes only centimeters apart. Explosives are placed at calculated depths with timing delays measured in milliseconds, not seconds, milliseconds. The charges don't all go off at once. They fire in a sequence so fast you can't hear the individual pops, but slow enough for the rock to break along natural weaknesses. Think of it like cracking an egg. Done right, the shell splits cleanly. Done wrong, you get yolk everywhere and regret. Here's the counterintuitive truth. Using more explosive power can actually reduce damage. Stronger, precisely timed charges break rock cleanly instead of transferring uncontrolled shock into the surrounding mountain. Less vibration, less collateral cracking, less future instability. Even so, blasting is only the beginning. Once the cliff is cut back, the mountain is exposed and exposure is dangerous. Fresh rock hasn't weathered. It hasn't settled. Gravity immediately starts negotiating. This is where construction gets personal. In many cliffside projects, heavy machinery can't reach the work zone. Cranes have nowhere to stand. Scaffolding can't be anchored from above. So crews work suspended over open air. Rope access technicians repeal down vertical faces with drills, bolts and hoses strapped to their bodies. Temporary platforms hang from anchors drilled into rock that was just blasted days earlier. It's engineering at human scale. One wrong move isn't an inconvenience. It's the end of the shift and everything after it. And yet this is where the mountain starts to be stitched back together. Engineers don't rely on the cliff staying put by itself. They reinforce it. Rock bolts, steel rods, often several meters, sometimes tens of meters long, are drilled deep into stable layers behind the fractured surface. These bolts are tensioned, pulling loose rock tight against the mountain like stitches closing a wound. Steel mesh is draped over faces that want to shed debris. Shotcrete, a sprayed concrete mixture, is applied to seal surfaces and lock small fragments in place. Anchors and cables work together, turning individual blocks of stone into a single load-bearing system. If this sounds excessive, it's because it is, on purpose. Would you trust a road held together by steel rods drilled deep into a mountain? Drop a yes or no in the comments, because every cliff road you've ever driven on probably works exactly like this. But even reinforced cliffs still drop rocks, always. So engineers plan for that too. 
Below unstable faces, rockfall fences stretch like industrial spiderwebs. These aren't decorative barriers. They're engineered to absorb enormous impact energy. When a boulder hits, the fence deforms, spreads the force, and sacrifices itself to save the road. Catchment ditches sit between the cliff and the pavement, designed to trap debris before it reaches traffic. Here's the clever part. Many of these systems are designed to be destroyed. A damaged fence means it worked. A clean fence after a rockfall would be suspicious. And then there's water, the quiet assassin of mountain roads. Water seeps into cracks, freezes, expands, thaws, repeats. Over years, it pries rock apart with more patience than any explosive. Rainwater adds weight. Snowmelt lubricates slip planes. Drainage systems hidden behind concrete and beneath asphalt carry water away before it can do damage. Water finds weaknesses the way gossip finds secrets, eventually, always. Despite all this, mountains still fight back. Landslides happen. Entire sections of road can shift centimeters or meters overnight. When that happens, Engineers don't panic. They close the road, reassess the geology, and redesign. Sometimes the original alignment is abandoned. Sometimes the mountain wins that round. That's why these roads are never finished. Modern cliffside highways are constantly watched. Sensors embedded in rock measure movement down to millimeters. Crack gauges track widening fractures. Laser scans compare cliff faces over time to detect subtle changes. Engineers don't wait for failure. They look for whispers of it. The road you drive today is stable because someone is still paying attention. So what's the takeaway here? American engineers don't conquer mountains, they negotiate with them. Every cliffside road is a compromise between gravity, geology, weather, and human need. Strength isn't enough. Patience matters more. Respect matters most. The next time you drive through a mountain pass, glance at the rock wall beside you. Beneath that calm surface is steel, concrete, sensors, and decades of planning, quietly holding the line between you and empty air. This has been the history of everyday things. Keep your curiosity switched on before gravity reminds you who's really in charge. <laughs>